Hey guys, Ms. McMahon. Today I'm going to read you a summary of the story of the Iliad. Uh, you may end up reading the whole story in either high school or college. It is written by a famous Greek author. His name is Homer. He also wrote a famous story called The Odyssey. Um, what it's called today is called The Trojan War. It is found in this book here, um, pages 49 and 50, from myths and legends from ancient Greece and around the world. So now the story is going to be a war between two Greek city-states, Sparta and Troy. As you recall, the, the Greek city-states were isolated and separated from one another due to all these different islands, the peninsulas, the mountains. And so the Greeks were not Greek, but they were more the Trojans, the Spartans, the Athenians, and so they were separated from one another. Now this story today, the Iliad, is going to be about a war, and usually wars are fought over land or trade or something else. This war is going to last for 10 years, and it is going to be fought over the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen of Troy. So let's begin. Helen had been the queen of Sparta for many happy years, and her fame as the most beautiful woman on earth had spread all over. When the goddess Aphrodite had promised her to Paris, the Trojans begged Paris to forget about forget Aphrodite's promise, or a terrible misfortune would befall them. But Paris ignored their warnings, and Paris sailed across the Aegean Sea to steal Helen, to steal Helen away from King Menelaus, and bring her to Troy. Helen sat serene and happy, surrounded by her ladies weaving and sewing her finest wools when Paris entered the palace in Sparta. Just as she looked up and saw him, arrows shot an arrow of love into her heart. She gathered her treasures without hesitation, and she eloped with him for Troy. A brisk wind carried them out to sea, but before they had sailed far, the wine-dark waters grew glassy and calm, and Nereus, the kind old man of the sea, rose from the depths. He warned them to return, or dire woe would befall them and their kin. But Helen and Paris had eyes and ears only for each other, and did not hear his warning. They landed in Troy, and the Trojans received her with great joy, proud that the most beautiful woman on earth was now Helen of Troy. But Menelaus, the king of Sparta, was not a man to stand idly by, whether or not his queen had been promised to Paris by a goddess. He reminded Helen's old suitors of their oath. They joined him with all their warriors, and it was not long before a huge Greek fleet arrived in Troy to fetch Helen back from Sparta. The Trojans refused to give Helen up, and Troy was hard to conquer, for it was surrounded by a high wall built by the gods Apollo and the god Poseidon. After long talks, it was decided that Paris and Menelaus should fight in a single combat, and Helen would go to the winner. Paris was no warrior. He preferred to rest on silken pillows and gaze into Helen's beautiful eyes. But Aphrodite came to his rescue and, and hid him in a cloud, and since Menelaus could not find his opponent, the duel was undecided. Then the two armies clashed together. For ten long years, the Greeks and the Trojans fought for Helen. The gods watched with great interest and even took part in the fighting themselves. Hera, angry with Paris for not giving, for not giving the apple to her, fought for the Greeks. Wise and just Athena was annoyed with Paris, so even though she was protectress of Troy, she fought for the Greeks. Ares fought wherever the battle was the hottest. And when he himself was wounded, he frightened both armies with his bowel or his howls. Free, sweet Aphrodite herself entered the raging battle to help her darling Paris, and she was also wounded. Enough, called Zeus, and he ordered all the gods to withdraw from the battle. They sat on the walls of Troy and watched the mortals decide the outcome for themselves. Many Greek heroes fell on both sides, but the Greeks could not storm the mighty walls of Troy, and the Trojans could not put the Greeks to flight as long as Achilles, the invulnerable son of Thetis, fought for them. Though Paris was no great marksman, fate had chosen him to slay the great hero Achilles. Apollo, unseen by other gods, 
ran to Paris' side and guided his hand as he drew back, taut his bow. The arrow struck Achilles in the heel, his only vulnerable spot. Mortally wounded, he fell to the ground. The Greeks mourned great, greatly the loss of their hero, Achilles, and took their revenge on Paris. He fell, pierced by one of the poison arrows that Hercules had given to Philocytes. Shortly afterwards, the Greeks broke camp, boarded their ships, and they sailed away. They left on shore a huge, a, a large wooden horse. The Trojans thought they had finally routed the Greeks, and in triumph they pulled the horse into their city as a trophy. But the horse was hollow and filled with Greek warriors. In the dark of the night they crept out, they opened the they opened Why the city gates? The wily Greeks had not left, but they had been hiding behind an island. Now they came pouring into the city, and proud Troy was destroyed. Helen was brought back to Sparta in triumph to sit among her ladies as lovely as ever, embroidering in lavender and purple threads on the finest wools. On the royal house of Troy, no one but Aphrodite's son Aeneas his father and his young son remained. The goddess returned to take them out of the smoking ruins and led them to safety. And so again, that's the summary of the book called The Iliad that was written by Homer. And again, he wrote another famous story called The Odyssey. Hope you enjoyed the story.